Hey guys, Fuzzy Knob here. Uh, welcome to part, uh, I don't know, seven of this uh, video tutorial series. Um, in the last part, we found a memory address to, to jump EIP to. Um, in this part, we're going to go find some shellcode. Um, if we were really awesome, we would generate our own shellcode, but at this point, uh, it's probably too much. Let's just go ahead and find some shellcode. Um, it's so just a quick recap. Of course, if this all looks foreign to you, you have landed somewhere in this tutorial series that you shouldn't be and should go back to the beginning. But anyways, so we know we have at least 500 bytes of space here as represented by all these hex 43s. So we should probably put something in there that we can jump to, which is this memory address, and it will actually run something useful for us. Um, if you're if you're playing the uh, like Smash the Stack War games, um, which uh, I have some other videos about how to get started on those, uh, this this is the part that um, you know sometimes you get stuck on. Like yeah, you can cause a buffer overflow. Yeah, you can uh, get it to jump somewhere in memory. But what do you put there? Does it one good piece of shellcode that I found for Linux? Um, this one's available at uh, shellstorm.org. Um, it is on the main page, and it is Tiny Shell by Sargrini. This one, it's 25 bytes long, which means uh, it's really tiny, uh, which is really useful, and it has worked really well for me. Um, yeah, sure, let's translate it, why not? Um, so, oh, actually, if it asks you if you want to translate it, don't. <laughs> because our shellcode disappeared. Um, so basically, uh, this is a whole write-up of how the shellcode was made, and maybe we'll get to this later, but what he's doing is he's executing this uh, xcve uh, bin uh, slash sh, which uh, is the shell. Um, and these are the assembly instructions to actually make that happen. Now this here is the hex representation in a string format which performs these same instructions because all these assembly instructions are just, well, data. Um, and since they're just data, they can be represented with uh, hex characters, like in a string. And um, the nice thing is, in this uh, line of shellcode, which is what this is called, there are no uh, x zero zeros because, as we discussed before, that would terminate our string and make everything not work. So we can just copy this shellcode and paste it right into our string. Now I've already done that and I have it somewhere here. Here's the shellcode and I'm going to paste it. This is the same one. I'm going to leave those C's there. We're going to change that. Um, we're going to make it, I don't know, 400. And after them comes our shellcode. You're probably saying, like, okay, it can't really be this easy, but yeah, it is. Uh, okay, and it hit enter for us, which is kind of not what we wanted, but... Okay, so make sure the quote ends there. And so we have shellcode. Now, we have a ton of space to use from all those C's we know it's going to work. Uh, something that we should do is put a NOP sled. Now, it's not that uh, necessary in this exploit, but in a lot of exploits it's necessary because the, um, the addresses of where things are in memory can change, and sometimes they can change by quite a bit. So if they're shifting around, uh, you'll miss, and you'll hit like in the middle of your code or in some other code, and these um, this shellcode here won't get executed. By putting a NOP sled, and NOP is uh, x90, what you can do is all you have to do is hit anywhere in those 400 x90s, and it will just execute no operation. That's what NOP stands for. No operation, no operation, no operation, no operation. Until it hits this data directly following it, which is our shellcode. 
so we know that the shellcode will get started at the beginning and it will finish. And all we have to do is hit anywhere in this 400 x 9 zeros. That's why I didn't have to figure out an exact memory address, I just pulled one of them in the middle. So if I hit enter here, uh, it should work actually. And it didn't. Oh well. Um, in the next video, we'll make it work outside of GDB. And uh, yeah, in the next video, we'll make it work. But that was how you go and find shellcode. Again, that was at shellstorm.org. I'll put a link in the description. Hey guys, if you liked the video series, please subscribe. See ya.